This is King's Lynx, and it's the closest we get to playing a Scottish-style Lynx course in Vancouver. It boasts firm fairways and strategic bunkering, and requires a ton of good decision-making to shoot a good score. And in order to do that, we need to follow the Ten Commandments of course management. Today I'll walk you through them. These high-lip bunkers on the left of the first hole raise perhaps the most important rule of course management. Nowhere to miss. Here the miss is clearly right of the bunkers, and I always aim up the right of the first hole. And despite my drives often missing left, I actually flare this one right of my target, and I'll wind up in a pretty nasty spot. My ball is buried here, and even my backswing is impeded. Heads up. But I should be able to hack a wedge out and get inside a hundred, where I can plop one on the green and get out with a bogey of worse. Sure, I could try to muscle a seven iron here, but in the likely case that I botch that shot, I'd be bringing double into play. We get the wedge on it without any drama. And the reward is my favorite number, 80 yards. After hitting this shot thousands of times at pitch and putt, I have a pretty good feel for it. This one's fine, and I'll have a putter in hand for par. We're about 10 feet above the hole, and my make percentage from here may only be 30 or 40. But this time, we managed to make it, and escape this hole with a hard-fought par. Another key rule of course management is to have a backup tee club. My driver typically misses left, and here on two there's water up the left, and the fairway on the right runs out at only about 240. So all we're trying to do is get one in play with a three wood. This one's a bit scuzzy, but because we've chosen the right club, we're fine. And with plenty of room to miss left and right here, we'll hit the three wood again. And this isn't the time to get cute. With a tuck pin on the right, I'll follow a simple commandment. Get it on the green. There was no reason to flag hunt here, and even after playing it left, I had a look at birdie and clean this one up for par. Three plays a stroke hole two, owing to OB on the left and a very challenging green complex. We'll aim this drive up the right, and even though it's exactly on our target line, we'll still have a challenge with this very difficult approach. It's difficult to see from this angle, but any shot to the left side of this green is likely to bound off, so I have no choice but to take on this pin. And despite hitting it exactly on line, I also get ejected off the back to a difficult spot to get up and down. This is the shot I was trying to execute, but I'll still have a challenging look at par. And once again, the flat stick will bail us out. Ooh. But we don't drain every long putt, and not every tee shot is on line. Short right is the miss I play for on the screen, but here it leaves me with a good 60 feet or so from the fringe. There's also a long stretch of uphill before the last 10 feet that go downhill. I left it on the crest of that hill, and the par putt just slips by. And we'll card our first bogey of the day. The fifth hole offers plenty of options. The carry over the bunkers on the left is about 220, but playing right of them should still leave a short iron or wedge in. And playing into a two-club wind, I'll opt for the safe route. The result is good, and leads us to course management rule number five. Aim at the middle of the green. The pin is tucked in the left corner, so I'll aim right of it, and I'm thrilled that the wind actually carries it a bit closer to the hole for one more look at birdie. But the flat stick hasn't heated up yet, hit it. and we'll take another par. After five good approaches, this is our first big iron miss of the day. It's Toey and misses short left, where I'll have a difficult pitch over a bunker. But fortunately this one's well hit, and goes to just a few feet, where I have my first major brain fart of the round. I'm above the hole and indecisive about the break. And I made the mistake of hitting it firm to take out some break, and then I missed the tester for bogey. We'll chalk it up to a lesson learned. And that leads us to today's sponsor, Swing Tweaks. I hit some uncharacteristic shots left on this hole, but thanks to some recent lessons on Swing Tweaks, I have a way better idea of why that's my miss. We went from here to about here. And I managed to virtually eliminate it for the rest of the round. Oh, shit. I know that so many of us are looking for more consistency in our games. And whether you use swing tweaks or not, I implore you to listen to what Tiger recently said. Don't go to YouTube for swing advice. Your swing has its own idiosyncrasies, and having a PGA pro give you tailored instruction is the best way to make improvements. Swing tweaks allows you to upload your swing on an app and receive same day instruction from a PGA pro complete with annotated videos and even notes and specific drills for you to work on. Best of all, it's way less hassle and a fraction of the price of in-person lessons. And they're still offering 20% off your first tweak if you use my code, GOLFISHARD, 
at sign up. This is indeed my last driver miss left today. And after getting that out of my system, I move on to another rule. Leave bad holes behind us. After a tidy start, we're three over through the last two. But I won't try to manufacture shots I don't have, or even let the last few holes inform my decision making on this hole. It's right back on the grind, and I'm happy to get off the bogey train here. What a four. Let's hit a fake, hit a fake, hit a fake. The next rule of course management is to know your shape and dispersion pattern. Despite a couple of misses left on the last two holes, in the last few months, I've been able to hit a fade with driver when needed. And on this hole, there is a massive advantage to covering the water on the left with a cut. If I weren't confident with my ability to fade one here, I'd accept a straight shot and a longer approach. The wind was also helping my shape off the tee, although I have to grab two extra clubs playing directly into wind on the approach here. I'm thrilled to get one on the green on this tough hole, and by tidying this one up close, I'm able to end the front nine with a solid par. And here's how the numbers break down on the front. Drives put me out of position on one and seven, and I hit an additional seven bad shots. But a handful of greens hit and a couple of good up and downs on one and three kept the score to a respectable 40. We'll hope to keep it going on the back, where we'll break down the remaining rules of course management. Here's the reliable fade again. And because we're playing into wind, it stopped short of the water. And I left the wind noise dialed up for just a second here so you can see what we're playing into. That's not my best approach, and it leaves me with another long lag putt. And it's a bit misjudged. I'll have some work left, and if you haven't noticed, we haven't made a putt from this range since the third hole today. But that's not on my mind here, and I won't make the mistake of trying to ram this one in. And lo and behold, we get it to go. The 11th is a great links hole. Bunkers bisect the fairway, forcing you to choose a line. And a 60-yard long bunker poses an obstacle for misses short of the green. I opt to miss right of the bunkers, although this one is flared farther than I'd prefer, where I follow it up with easily my worst course management decision of the day. We're playing downwind, and I'm thinking I might be able to bound one up close to the green with the three wood, but I mention the long bunker protecting this green, and a 60 yard bunker shot is one of the tougher shots in golf. You could give me a bucket of balls to get one this close, and I might do it once, so I'll take a second to thoroughly evaluate this one but I guess I used up my karma on the last shot, and I'll take a par here. The 12th offers no reprieve whatsoever. This hole winds around the water into another extremely well-protected green. So this hole will need to start with a good decision off the tee, and smoothing a three wood into play will leave me with just a nine iron in. But the greenskeeper must have been angry this morning because this flag is tucked right in the back right corner of the green. But I'm following the course management rule here of aiming at the middle, and it's only incidental that this one actually tracks down the stick. And rule sticklers in the comments, feel free to let me know what the ruling should be here, because my ball struck Mikey's. But in this game, my punishment will be playing mine out before his, where I do manage to make the par. I think it's the club. Course management rule number eight is to take your ego out of decision making. I carry my pitching wedge 115 yards, and I've noticed that a lot of amateurs feel funny about taking more club when necessary. I'm hitting a 140 carry club into a two club wind, and even though I pull it off my target line, it proves to be the right club. I'll have a side hiller here for birdie that I don't put high enough. And after Dan rolls his into about the same spot, I have a proposition for him. Good for good there? Yeah. Hole 14 once again demands you take a strategic line off the tee. And with bunkers dotting the right side of the fairway, I'll aim one up the left. It's hit a bit high on the face, but because I've chosen a safe line, I'm in an okay position. Although wind is becoming a major factor in this closing stretch. My drive only went 200, and this is as well as I can hit a three wood, and it goes about 180. And there's an insane pin tucked at the front of this green, so I grab two extra clubs, and I pull it a bit off my line, leaving me with another tough lag. And this seems an opportune time to talk about putting. It's usually the strength of my game, but I can't have it going every day. And with the wind howling and a lot of tough putts, I'm not phased by the high putt tally today. I'll roll with it in stride, heading into the king's moat. And what is the king's moat? Well, it might not be Amen Corner or the Bear Trap, but my friends and I have dubbed the final four holes at King's Links the king's moat. Water's in play everywhere on them, and candidly, I'm not disappointed to limit the damage on these holes to bogeys. Seriously, the greenkeeper was an asshole today. I've never seen the pin tucked here, and once again, I'll take aim at the middle of the green. The result is another tough lag putt over a ridge, and I thought I had done a pretty good job with this one, 
but it will leave me with another knee knocker for three here. And I mentioned that we just can't have it every single day with the flat stick. And I'm going to tally a rare back-to-back -back three putt. Frustrating, but we'll move on. Hole 16 is the only hole in the king's moat without water, but it plays long. It's about 300 to the 150 here, and just another green well protected by some nasty bunkers. Once again, we're aimed up the right, and once again we flare it, but it's better than the duck hooks. And now on to an interesting decision. I often fat them out of the bunkers, and oddly tend to make better contact with my hybrids. It would take a miracle to get this one greenside, but I'm okay being a bit short. And what happens here is a welcomed bonus. I'll take that! And I'll give you one last window into how much the wind is affecting us. Yeah. It might have affected my ability to focus over the last few putts. And this one isn't my best either. But we remain patient and wipe the slate clean over each one. And we finally get one here. For my money, this is the hardest hole on the golf course. It's tricky choosing a number to play off the tee, and regardless, your approach shot is right over water into a green complex that loves to repel balls away. And I'd love to say that I intentionally kept this ball below the wind, so we'll go with that. And only upon watching this footage did I see what happened here. I was aligned super right, and instinct took over to hit it more left, where my approach misses the green entirely. And the king's mode is bound to snag us at points, and here I blade my chip almost clear over the other side of the green. Now I have to two-putt to preserve bogey, but fortunately, we do just that. Hole 18 is a monster, and the capstone on the king's mode. And playing into win today, we'll use it to embody course management rule number 9. No swing changes on the course. I'm not about to become Bryson and hit one 300 into this wind. I'm just going to play my shot up the left, knowing that it may leave me a long way home. Great box. Great box. Which leads to course management rule number 10. Just accept it. I have a three wood in hand here, and I top it. But sometimes our best laid plans will be torpedoed by poor execution. Even this short approach shot is done in by poor execution as well. And so is this chip. The key is to not let poor shots linger over the shots to follow. I have a long, long putt for bogey here, but the scorecard doesn't discriminate whether we're putting for eagle or for triple. It's just one more stroke on the card. That one almost drops. And sadly, we'll card a double on 18 that prevents us from breaking 80 today. We finished the King's Moat playing bogey golf, and any day that I hit 36 putts is one that I'm unlikely to break 80. The highs today were hitting a lot of greens in regulation and using good course management that prevented us from losing a single stroke to a hazard or a penalty. I hope you found the rules of course management helpful and that you're able to incorporate them to shave a few strokes off of your game.